Welcome back to the i427 garage everybody. Today we're going to take a closer look at our new turn signal switch and uh, show you kind of how it works and uh, what it looks like and uh, what you guys can do to go ahead and get one. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to kind of tell you the, um, the procedure for ordering one of these. The best thing to do is to contact us by email at ie427garage at gmail.com. Make sure you put a period after the I and the E in IE427. And then let us know your interest in the turn signal switch. And right now our kind of delivery time is between two and three weeks. Every one of these has to have custom machining and all that machining is done by hand by my buddy Dan out in Tennessee. So we're sending this, the, your hub directly to him and then when he's done we're doing these in batches of four. When he gets done with four of them he ships them out to me. In the meantime I have done all the final assembly on the turn signal switch itself and gotten it ready to be packaged up and shipped out to you as a complete unit. So average delivery times right now are two to three weeks. Now we're hoping to get that reduced. Um, we're working right now with another machine company and we might get to the point where we don't even need your hub. We're just going to have a brand new hub, CNC machine with the proper uh, fitment for the factory 5 steering shaft and with our canceling tangs or pins already machined onto the hub itself and it'll all be one piece. As you see ours, it looks like one piece but it's actually two pieces that are pressed together. It looks really nice when it's all put together. Um, I hope to show you one of these um, installations at some point but the car that I have here which is the coupe, I'm going to actually prototype a turn signal switch for it. It currently has a Russ Thompson turn signal switch on it. That's what uh, the owner had provided us with the kit and it's already installed. I'm going to pull that one off and I'm going to prototype one of our turn signal switches to fit in that basically that place in the coupe and then this this owner is going to get his Russ Thompson one put back in because he's already drilled the hub for a quick release. Um, while we're, uh, while we're taking the time to talk about quick release, we are prototyping a quick release mechanism for our turn signal switch right now. The, um, the prototype unit is right now being shipped back to our shop here and uh, we're going to take a look at it. At this point, we're only looking at using the Motion Raceworks quick release. Now once we go into full production and we have another company doing all the machine work, we may be able to drill that for multiple quick release mechanisms. We are not providing the quick, re quick release. That's something you guys do on your own. All we're providing is the hub and the turn signal switch. You guys install it, you guys put your own quick release on there and everybody's happy. So let's turn around, we'll take a look at the unit and uh, I'll show you how everything goes together. All right, so these are all the pieces that come with your turn signal switch. And it will be fully assembled when you get it, meaning the machine screws for the steering wheel will be placed inside the steering hub and run in so that you know where they go and how they, how they assemble. The angled spacer will be mounted to the turn signal switch and the backing plate will be fastened using these three Allen head screws and those three locking nuts. So everything is ready to go for you to basically disassemble what we're providing you so you know the order in which it all goes together and then install it in your car. Now I want to make a note here that there is a difference between the Mark IV hub that we have here and the previous generation of hubs. Those being from the Mark I through the Mark III. If you look in here where the number four is inside the hub, you'll notice that the spaces between these two holes are wider. 
that signifies the top of the hub. But if you notice where the flats are inside the hub, where it attaches to the steering shaft, they are vertical, up and down. We've got a Mark III hub right here, and if you notice, we've got the same wide spacing, which indicates the top for the steering wheel to go on properly. But in this case, for a Mark III, and it's marked accordingly, the flats, where it attaches to the steering shaft, are horizontal, side to side. So it's very important that when you let us know what we're making this for, you let us know if you have a Mark III or a Mark IV. Because we know the difference, but if you don't tell us, then it's going to be a matter of us calling you to find out if you provided us a Mark III hub in place of a, a newer Mark IV hub and verifying that you actually indeed have a Mark I through Mark III car. Because the only way to get these properly oriented on your steering shaft is to change them at the actual steering rack where the spline adapter is. And so we, won't, we wouldn't want to have, to have anybody go through all that trouble just because, for instance, you don't want to send us the hub from your car and so your buddy gives you one that he had left over and it just happens to be from a Mark III car. So we want to make sure that everybody gets, one, the hub that they provide us back, and two, that they get the proper hub for the car that they're working on. Now that goes for the coupes. But as I said, we're working on prototyping a kit for the coupe right now. So you coupe guys, sorry, you're just going to have to wait a little bit longer. And uh, we're hoping to have something for you guys in the next few months. So that's kind of how, how, how the pieces are going to all come assembled and put together for you. Um, I'm going to come right back. I'm going to show you what it looks like all put together. And then we'll talk about the operation of everything that is actually in the turn signal switch itself. All right, so here is everything put together and assembled, and this is the way it ships. So all the machine screws are put in the hub. Now these are threaded holes. So unlike the factory five boss where you put the screws through and put a nut on the back, we've threaded the inside of this. So it's up to you what you want to do to preserve those threads, whether you want to use some anti-seize or whether you want to use some uh, you know, medium or low strength Loctite so that the um, stainless on aluminum threads do not gall. It's completely up to you. So that, that's that piece. And then I wanted to show you the cancellation tangs on the back. So if you remember, the widest spaced holes are the top. And so our canceling tangs are on the top and on the very bottom. So you can see those right there. And that's what cancels the turn signals right and left when you return the wheel to center after a turn. So there's that. You can see here we've got the turn signal switch and on the back we have an angled spacer. And that angled spacer is what allows this to sit flush on your dash. So this actually bolts to your dash, whether you have a carbon fiber dash the padded plastic dash um, from Factory 5, a carbon dash from Factory 5, or your own dash that you've fabricated for your car. And then these through bolts go through, and there's a backing plate on the back of here. Let's see if I can get that thing to come loose. You've got a backing plate right here that sandwiches everything together. And we've provided screws here lately that are a little bit longer than the ones we were providing with the first few kits. We found that some of the padded dash guys were having some issues with the hardware not being long enough, so we went ahead and we got some longer hardware here. These should not interfere with anything on the back of your dash. And then those are Allen head screws. And I got a question on one of our beta testers early on, and he was complaining that he couldn't get to these screws right here and right here. And I, it was, I don't know, I, I don't want to make anybody feel bad, but it was common sense to me. If you just turn the turn signal one way, you open up that area. So now we've got clear access to that bolt. And if we turn it the other way, now we've got clear access to that bolt. So as you're assembling it, just move the turn signal stock one way or the other in order to get a clear shot to that hardware. And one of the reasons we made these cap head Allen screws is that you can use an Allen wrench and get in there and not have to worry about a socket or anything else. So that's the uh, the turn signal and how it mounts. 
like I said, later when I get one of these on a cr uh, customer car, we'll go ahead and show you the actual mounting procedure and all that in one of the videos. I just don't have a car in the shop right now that I can put one of these on. So the next thing I want to talk about is the actual turn signal mechanism. How it, how it works is just like a traditional turn signal switch. So you're going to, you know, put it down to turn left and turn it up to go right. And then our canceling tangs, which I showed you here, engage on, on, these, on this mechanism inside the turn signal switch and cancel it when you complete your turn. So that's how that works. Now it's, it's very important when you guys put these together that you leave a bit of space between the turn signal switch itself and the hub so that there isn't binding. So we generally recommend a sixteenth of an inch. So it's going to be something like, like that right there. All that adjustment can be done with the pillow block that is behind the dash on your steering shaft. Now let's talk about the turn signal stock itself. There are no wires running through the turn signal stock. And some of the folks that first saw this commented how big the turn signal like stock is. And it's not that big. I mean, there's my index finger. Now I got big hands. But you can see it's no bigger than my index finger. Actually, it's quite smaller in comparison. But you can change out this stock with something more, more formal if you'd like. And because there's no wires running through it, you don't have to worry about anything shorting out. You don't have to worry about running your wires or running the wires back through anything you might buy to put on here. You can just change out the stock and then be on your merry way. Now, the turn signal does have a provision for the horn. And that is done by lightly pulling the stock towards the driver. So you can see on the one I've got here, there is a mechanical switch on the back side and that switch engages a contact on the back in order to activate your horn. There's a secondary switch on the right side of, this, of the switch itself and that can be used for your hazard lights or your high beams. It's completely up to you how you want to use that switch. You can choose not to use it at all. The, um, the switch knob itself, if you choose not to use it, can be unscrewed. There's a Phillips head screw in there. You can pull it out and not use it. Or you can leave it there and you can use it and uh, use it for either one of those functions that I mentioned. Now, we do provide a wiring diagram and an installation instruction manual to put both this in and to wire the entire thing. If you want to use the secondary switch for your hazard lights, it will require the use of a two-pole relay, which we do have a part number for in the wiring diagram. If you want to use it for your headlights, again, it's going to require a single pole relay. And again, we've left that part number in the instructions in the wiring diagram so you can get a relay that will work to activate your high beams and low beams. Alright, like I said, um, I had a few people comment when I originally posted pictures of the turn signal unit on, I don't know whether it was the forum or Facebook, and someone said, you know, it was ugly and that uh, we should do something about changing the, uh, the turn signal stock. Now, the wonderful thing about this unit is it's customizable. You guys can choose to leave it just as it is, or you can choose to customize the handle and you know put your personal touch on it. What I did on the unit that I'm going to show you here in a second is I ordered a Ford turn signal stock from a company on eBay. And this, I believe, is from a 60s and 70s Ford, like, sedan, like the, 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 the Fairlane, the Mustang, the Mavericks. So, 
I found one of these for $13 is I think what I paid for this one and I paid the same for the other one that I'm going to show you that's already mounted. And here's the part number for you. And what we end up doing is we end up cutting about an inch off the end of this and then filing down the end so that it'll fit inside this unit. And then we stick it in the vise and we put a gentle bend about right here in the same location that the existing bend is on the turn signal unit. And what we end up with And what we end up with is this. So you can see this one has a bend in it. And it's approximately the same length as its predecessor. And it's shiny and blingy. Now, we are not going to be installing these turn signal handles or stocks. We're going to leave this up to you. Because if, if we have to go ahead and include the labor and the material that it takes in order to do this, it's going to take the price of the turn signal unit up to something I just think is unreasonable. And I, I, I look at it this way, guys. If you're in a position that you've built a car, you can certainly modify the handle for a turn signal switch. Now, maybe I'll be proven wrong. <laughs> and all of you want us to install them. And I'll revisit that later if that becomes the issue. But I think it's going to add to the cost about $70 per unit. By the time I have to source these, by the time I have to machine them in order for them to fit, and for the time that it takes for me to take the old one out and install these. Like I said, I just think it's unreasonable to pass that cost on to you guys when it's something that any one of you can probably do in your garage in an hour or two and uh, have something that's a little bit more custom than basically what we send you. Now what we send you works just perfectly. We've got, uh, at this point, I think we've got about 20 of these out in the market and uh, we've had some really good feedback on these. As a matter of fact, I don't think we've had any complaints other than a few people that had some issues with the wiring, which we've walked them through. So time will tell, but uh, the, the, the unit, so far has uh, shown that it's very robust, it's very easy to install, it can be installed and retrofit on an older car, which those of you that have Mark 1s through Mark 3s or even some early Mark 4s and don't have a self-canceling turn signal switch on your car, this works perfect for that because you don't have to pull the dash out. The only thing you have to pull off is the hub itself. And then once you fit the unit, you may have to adjust your steering shaft in or out a little bit in order to get the proper spacing between the turn signal hub and the turn signal switch itself. So it's a win-win because you don't have to disassemble your entire dash in order to put this thing in. Of course, you're going to have to wire it in. So depending on how you wire the car, that may add to a little bit of uh, aggravation. But uh, in the long run, just getting this installed is going to be really, really easy. So I think that's going to wrap this up. Um, I know this isn't the normal video, but I knew I had to get something like this out because um, we've had some people inquiring about it and they have questions. And a lot of times just a quick video can answer just a plethora of questions and then we can always guide whoever's asking questions to the video. So I appreciate you guys for watching as always. If you're enjoying the content here on the channel, as always, do the like, the share, the subscribe, all that kind of stuff. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.